Hi everybody, my name is Jacob Purcell. I'm a licensed tour guide here in Israel and I'd like to welcome you to the old city of Akko. Right now we're enjoying these beautiful banyan trees in the shade put here by the British. Remember the British rule the area then known as Palestine from 1918 to 1948. Napoleon actually had one of his worst defeats right here at the hands of the Turks and the British in 1799. So I'd like to invite you to come with me to an underground adventure here in the old city of Akko. Let's go. We've gone down some steps, so we're about 10, 12 feet underground level. Now, in back of me, this large building over here is a Turkish prison built at the end of the 19th century. And when the Turks built that prison, they knew they were building it on some sort of ruin, but they didn't know what type of ruin. The Turks leave the Holy Land at the end of World War I in 1918, the British come. And what the British do is they turn that prison into the Alcatraz of the British Empire. This was the most secure prison in the Middle East at that time. We're talking between 1918 and 1948. 1948, the state of Israel is established. The prison becomes a uh, hospital. And when the patients are moved, the, uh, the Society for the Protection of Archaeology and Antiquities in Akko gets the area and starts excavating. They were excavating between 1958 and 2014. And what we're going to see is the fruit of that excavation, the underground Crusader city. If we look at the model, you might be able to discern two shades of gray. The darker shade is what has survived. The lighter shade is what hasn't. Reconstructed, all this was the Knights of St. John, as they were known, of the hospital. This was their headquarters. We'll be going to the bottom of the church here, which was built about 900 years ago. So let's go inside. Notice we're walking even deeper underground. So we're going to the actual basement of this hospital or fortress. And in the basement of a fortress are dungeons. Okay, so we're in the dungeon, we're in the holding cell of uh, the, the uh, hospital or order. And what I want you to notice are the, these holes we see still existing in these blocks of stone here. And you can see where the irons were put in. The hospital or order had brothers. And the brothers had to abide by a code. And if they broke that code, let's say by the sin of gluttony or the sin of pride, they would be given a sentence to be chained up here for a couple of days until they learn their lesson. We've exited the dungeon and we're actually now at street level during the Crusader period. But street level during the Crusader period is about 20, 25 feet under the ground today. So these murals are very helpful and I'd like to point out the armor that the knights were wearing. They weren't really wearing what we'd call armor, but they wore something called chain mail. Armor wasn't quite developed back then. And we're talking about 1150 to 1200, 1250, the Crusader period here in the Holy Land. And you can see that what the knights are wearing are chain mail, and these are small pieces of metal painstakingly soldered together. And they wore what looked like a big overshirt with sleeves called a halbrick. And then they wore some sort of head covering. If you were an aristocrat, you got a helmet. 
And of course, you're on a horse. The weapons they had were these huge swords called a broadsword of tempered steel. And the European warfare here in the Holy Land was a line of knights in this armor charging anything in its path. And anything in its path was destroyed. The only disadvantage was it's hot here in the Middle East. And that will be their downfall. Welcome to the beautiful hall. This was one of the last pieces of the puzzle here. One of the last sites in this fantastic underground crusader city that was uncovered and reconstructed. We're pretty sure that this fantastic hall was used to officially greet European aristocrats who have made the pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Now remember, the hospital or order was really in two parts. We hear the word hospital in there. Half of the knights were trained physicians and surgeons. The other half were some of the most serious soldiers in the Middle East. They were mounted knights we saw before. So how did they get along? How did they have an income? That's where the aristocrats come in. The aristocrats donated land, jewelry, monies to these order to bring Christianity to this part of the world and to reclaim Jerusalem for Christianity. So it was a very important room for the hospital or order here where the grand master of the order would come, officially greet the pilgrims, hold a mass. Remember the, uh, the uh, knights higher up in the order were also priests, hold a Thanksgiving mass and take care of the pilgrims who were probably a bit under the weather from probably a couple month long journey. So the beautiful hall here in Akko. So we would be walking in an open street if we were here about 850 years ago. By the way, that's a recording you hear in the background of uh, as if you were hearing a busy street. I think that's kind of cute. We've entered the main dining hall. And this was where the knights, they called themselves brothers, came for their meals. Now, the hall here is one of the most magnificent examples of crusader architecture in the world. The hall was found more or less as we see it. You can see how large the supporting pillars are and the reason you need these pillars is because above us were two more stories. Now, the Crusader Knights ate at a big, long wooden table. They sat on benches on either side of the table. The only person who had a chair was the Grand Master. He would be sitting at the head of the table over there. That's where we get the expression, chairman of the board. As we look around, we see the magnificence of the uh, Crusader architecture here in Akko. We've left this large dining room and we've entered this huge exercise area. Now, this is the center courtyard of the Crusader hospital or fortress. And this is the, where they would take their horses and they would train. You know, we've all seen the movies, uh, you know, where you see the guys on horses and they're jousting and they're taking their wooden swords and practicing their, combat still, their combative skills. But that's what they really did back then. But one thing you have to realize is that this has all been excavated. Above us, we see half of an exercise yard of this Turkish and later British prison. And the exercise yard completely covered this and this was all filled with rubble. So this entire area was excavated within the last 50 years, but the prison still exists. And this prison is important. If you've seen the movie uh, Exodus with Paul Newman, the prison breakout scene was actually filmed here.
what we're walking through now is the Hospitaller Grand Hall. And you can see this hall indeed is absolutely humongous. Now, again, we're not quite sure what it was used for. Uh, were the uh, knights stabling their horses here? My theory is, is that the knights here are uh, using this for storage. They're using their war material. They have workshops here. They have artisans making armor, uh, uh, taking care of their swords. Uh, remember, this is a city within a city. So you would need an area for this type of work to get done. Remember, this is really in today's world, this would be in a very sophisticated army base. So army bases, big ones in North America, in Europe, are essentially small cities. So the size of this hall indicates the wealth and power of the hospital or order. As a child, there's a game we like to play, horseshoes. Well, the Crusaders had a game very similar, but you can see they have these loops made out of hemp or rope and the idea was to throw it and have it hang on the horn just like that. It just got a bullseye. The Crusaders had a problem. Their problem was there never were enough of them. At their height, only about 10% of the population of the Levant were crusaders. So you had this huge fortress and you didn't have a lot of guys to defend it. So what the crusaders did was they dug underground tunnels to get from one part of their complex to the other to make the enemy think there are more of you than there really are. Here we are at the light at the end of the tunnel, literally, and we're going to end up under the church that no longer exists, this uh, sort of basement of a church is called an undercroft. Okay, everybody, we've left the hospital or complex. We're inside the walls of the old city of Akko. One of the great things in Akko, of course, is the bazaar, the shuk. So we're gonna walk through this main road here in the market, and you can see people buying just about anything from socks to uh, Turkish taffy, vegetables. Uh, of course, when you come to Akko, what you're gonna want is some good food, and especially hummus, and that's where we're gonna go right now. Calamari, shrimp sand, fresh sea bass. Yes, sea Guys, bass. we're at the famous Abu Crystal restaurant yes. here in Akko. Just doesn't get better than this. Abu Cristo here in Akko. Well, we're just about at the end of our tour, but it wouldn't be complete without coming to the port of Akko. Now, Akko always wasn't called Akko. When Alexander the Great gets here, he changes the name of the city from Akko to one of his general's name, Ptolemais. And if we open up the good book to Acts 21, 7, when Paul is coming back to Jerusalem, and it says, and when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Ptolemais, greeted the brethren, and stayed with them one day, and the next day, we who were, were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea. So Caesarea is south of here. So Paul comes right here to this port, Ptolemais, now called Akko, into his final stay in Jerusalem before he'll be tried in Caesarea and sent back to Rome to meet his fate. So, my name is Jacob Fursell, Voice of Faith Tours. Hope you enjoyed our tour of the United Nations Heritage Site, 
the old city of Ocon.